As much as we prepare and try to plan for the arrival of our baby, there is some things that we have to come to reality about. And the reality that there can be challenges with being new parents mm -hmm. and also challenges that can come with that. Mm -hmm. And also evaluating some of the flaws that you have as an individual mm -hmm. and how that can bring some type of struggles in new parenthood. Yeah. So with that said, let's talk about it. We're pregnant. We're pregnant. We are having a baby. So conversations like this, I think, are super important because as new parents, I think we have to really evaluate ourselves as individuals and us as a couple to say, you know, what are some of the things that we possibly could struggle with because right. of some of the character flaws or some of the responsibilities that we might lack? It gives us the opportunity to have conversations before our child is here and struggles in new parenthood is inevitable right something that you know all parents have to adjust to this new life with a child mm -hmm. and the responsibility that a child has and knowing that this child is relying a hundred percent on you mm -hmm. and doing that effectively can sometimes be challenging yeah and definitely for couples you know we're, we're all individuals we all have different mindsets and, and different ways of doing things so trying to do that under one roof and to do it jointly, sometimes there's challenges with that. And then also evaluating some of the character flaws or some of the uh, characteristics that we pose ourselves as individuals and realizing some of the things that we need to work on ourselves so right. that we can be better parents and be and, more, productive, and be as more productive as parents. So I think the conversations that we have as a unit um, and as a married couple mm -hmm. are extremely important pre baby yes. so that we can work on this and we can have these conversations of communication so exactly. that we both know individually what we can work on and what I, what you can work on and we can work off of those strength strengths and weaknesses so that we can be better parents when baby Jordan does come. Exactly. And then also when he's here, like you said, um, the conversations that we had prior to his arrival, we can reassess those conversations and say, hey, this is what we talked about before he's here. And when he arrives, we may learn that there is there may be some, you know, shifts when it comes to mm -hmm. roles, responsibilities, output and saying like, hey, I know we discussed this, but we got to reevaluate a right. few things because now that he's here, life looks a little bit different. Right. And what we thought might be the game plan is no longer the game yeah, plan. It's, so it's, still it's, continuing to, to have that conversation. Yeah. Um, but that's so true that you said like addressing and acknowledging character flaws and yeah. like traits that we all as humans possess that right. may not make us the most productive. Right. And understanding that early on so that we can take the necessary steps now so that by the time that he's here, we have already developed a little bit of a pattern and yeah. having new habits that we can incorporate to make it a little bit easier and to work more efficiently too. Exactly. Because the goal is to work smarter, not harder. And you're gonna be you're gonna be working regardless. With the, <laughs> you gonna be the working baby. hard. You gonna be regardless. working. You gonna be working. But if you can make it as efficient right. as possible and, and less stressful as possible, I think that's the ultimate goal. That's right. what everyone wants, you know. Exactly, and that's why we're having these conversations. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's just jump straight into it mm -hmm. and I'll start with me. One thing that I know that I've been thinking about that I possibly could struggle with is that, you know, I, I grew up as a, as a single child basically. Mm -hmm. Um, and with that, you know, there's a, a little bit of selfishness and there's a little bit of, you know, my way or the highway mm -hmm. type of, uh, attitude sometimes that I can have. Mm -hmm. And now that, you know, having a child, it's completely different, but I've kind of gotten over the hump with that already, you know, with you being my wife for as long as you have been or my partner for as long as you have, you know, you start to open up your life to it being not so much just about you. And so having a dog. So as well, I and, think has having, and having a dog and all that stuff. So, you know, with you in my life and a dog in our life, you understand that life is not only about you mm -hmm. and you're not operating in this singular like everything has to revolve around you. So mm -hmm. I've already gotten out of that mindset, but it's a whole new type of mindset that you have to adapt to when you have a child, when you yes. actually have another living human being that is 100% relying on you. Mm -hmm. So although I might not be in that completely selfish, singular mindset that, you know, I could have been, you know, 
growing up and, and being the only child and all that stuff, I feel like I possibly could struggle still with that because mm-hmm. I still have some of those tendencies yeah. in me. So I do believe that some selfish tendencies that I do have could appear in, in early parenthood. Mm-hmm. Um, but having this conversation and letting you know maybe this is something that could be a flaw of mine, you know, and you obviously you know me, you know right. that could happen. Mm-hmm. That but is you're something, acknowledging it. That yeah. is something that I acknowledge but I'm going to continue to work on. Mm -hmm. Um, And then another struggle that I would say of mine, unless you want to jump into yours. No, you can go into your next one, yeah. So another struggle that I think for me is I've always been the person that has been the financially responsible one and, you know, making sure that we are good financially Mm -hmm. and we have been really good as a couple over the last uh, several years of doing so. Um, and this is something that's been a practice of mine since I've been a you know teenager, you know, making sure that finances are in order and finances are good and managing money and now doing it jointly um, for the last many years mm-hmm. of our relationship. So, you know, doing it as two people, doing it jointly is one obstacle that you, you grow into. Mm-hmm. But now doing it with two people and a baby is a whole nother animal. Yeah. And realizing, you know, the expenses that come into having a child. Yeah. And, it's not cheap. <laughs> you know, just all the starting expenses of, yes. you know, the clothes, the the baby wipes, the, the diapers, it, just a whole bunch of stuff that yeah. you could list. And realizing this is expensive. Yes. This is expensive. <laughs> so really... Um, trying to evaluate this new chapter of life and adjusting to that is something that is an early struggle even right now because Mm -hmm. we're starting to purchase all of these items for a baby and going to in the first year, second year, third year, and so on and so so forth. forth, But those first couple of years really are that transition um, of new parenthood. And it's like, wow, like this is really real. Like this is the stuff that we need to do to Mm -hmm. support our baby. Um, So, that is something that I feel like I can and I am a little bit struggling with as yes. far as like some of the expenses. It's like, do we really need to do that? And um, and I mean, I, I can't understand why you feel like that, because there is a difference between like what you actually need versus what you just want to right, have. Right. And so I think that for you, you're still trying to understand that. And another thing that contributes to that, which makes it a little bit different from my perspective is that like you say you grew up essentially being the only child mm-hmm. so you weren't really ex- in your family small so you weren't really exposed to having like kids grow up around you to be able to see like what it takes to to raise a baby and to what you need to just have this baby thrive right. as best as possible and for me you know I come from a very big family I have four sisters yeah four sisters and almost all of them have children and I have a ton of nieces and nephews. So I've just seen also growing up like things that you need to prepare for a baby, um, my cousins and things like that. So for me, I just know like, okay, you need to have this, you need to have that. But for you not being exposed to that and not knowing, it's just like, oh my gosh, all you hear, not in a bad way, but you hear cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Like how much is that going to cost? How much is that going to cost? And there's nothing wrong with wanting to make sure that we're still being reasonable, financially reasonable. And, you know, we're not just spending all this money, but not being mindful of what we're spending. And we still have to prepare for his future. We have to prepare for, you know, retirement and things like that. Um, But yeah, it's it's an adjustment for you. It's an adjustment for you for sure. And I think that with education that it will help you kind of just put put you more at ease because I think when you hear it coming from me, me personally, you think that I'm just like, oh, we got to have this. We, we, we got to have this. And you're just like, do we really need that? But it's because you don't necessarily know. Right. But hearing it from me, you're just like, I don't know. I think you're just trying to spend a little extra. What's the difference between need and want? But I think if you yeah. heard it from a friend of yours that has children or one of your homeboys that has kids and he said the same thing, or if my sister or someone else said it, you'd be like, oh, yeah, you're right. You know, yeah. I think we do need that. So that is true. It's a little bit of it's, it's a shift. It's yeah. A shift. It, yeah. And, and I think that's what it is. And mm-hmm. like I like we said, it to open up this video, I think 
having conversations like this to really be vulnerable and really share yeah. some of the things that possibly could be mm-hmm. a challenge for you right is important because your partner knows mm-hmm. what some of those things could be and then you can also be real with yourself and acknowledge some of the things that yeah. you personally could struggle with and try to right. work on it um going forward mm-hmm. but you know once baby jordan is here i think it's it's really you, gonna, you can have it all baby you can have it all <laughs> <laughs> you can have it all i mean i really do because i you know i got a big heart and yeah, I, I i love hard and and uh jordan is going to be the apple of my eye and it's and just the extension of your of your family the extension too, you of know? my so, family so you know it's it's not going to be so much about oh you know do we really need this or do we just want this? It's yeah. going to be like, man, you can have it all. <laughs> and I really do feel like that. Um, but, you know, right now it's just that transition of yeah, like, it's wow. A transition. Like, it's not just me and, and Jen anymore. And it's not cheap, me, you know. Me, Jen, and a dog. A dog is one thing. You know, you, you, you buy a couple of, you know, toys and the food and all that stuff. That's one thing. But a, a little baby boy, that's baby a, that's girl, a whole ball that's game. a whole nother ball game. Mm-hmm. And just trying to... Um, evaluate Mm -hmm. everything that comes with that is uh is a lot but you know it's something that is a beautiful process and i think we're both ready for it it's just something that you know possibly could be a struggle something that could pop up yeah first couple of months um Mm -hmm. to a year but i would say those are my two struggles that i possibly could have going into parenthood going into parenthood yeah or you could see appearing early into parenthood i think for me um And we've had conversations about this often. Um, And I've grown a lot, but I can be really hard on myself. Mm. And I am really working on that. I feel like I have come a long way since the gen from like years ago, just wanting to try to please everybody Mm -hmm. and having not the best relationship with the word no. And me thinking that because I say no, that doesn't make it makes me not a good person. But I'm learning that that helps create boundaries. Yeah. And so I think that I may struggle with that a little bit um, early on into parenthood because I'm the type of person that, one, wants to try to do everything right. Right. And if something doesn't go a certain way, I can tend to overthink. And so I know with parenthood, especially being a first time mom, I'm not going to get everything right and I don't know what I'm doing, but I am, I do foresee that there can be challenges where I'm really hard on myself. If Mm. like, if I'm watching all these videos on how the the sleep is scheduled for the baby and this, this and that, and it doesn't go that way or Jordan is crying and I don't know what he wants. I'm afraid that, you know, early on into parenthood, I could take it as maybe I'm not doing the best job and I'm being hard on myself when in reality, we're giving it all that we can and I'm doing the best that I can. And it doesn't mean that it's a bad job. Right. It's just a learning curve. It's a new experience. Exactly. So one of my flaws for sure is that I can be really hard on myself and take um, certain challenges or setbacks and just really overthink it at times when I don't need to. Yeah. Um, so that's something that I acknowledge and I've been working on it, but and I think you know, you've been doing a great job. I mean, mm-hmm. Yes, you are no you're no longer the the gen of old. You have matured and grown yeah. over the years and it's just a beautiful thing to see mm-hmm. your growth over over a decade, mm-hmm. you know, 12, 13 years. I've seen right. your growth and you, I can tell you, you're going to be an incredible mom. Thank and, you. and honestly, I I'm, I'm really I'm pleasantly surprised or not even surprised, I'm pleasantly I'm just pleased mm-hmm. of all the effort that you're giving into the education of being a new mom and mm-hmm. the things that you need and things that you need to prepare and right. for yourself and for the baby. Mm-hmm. And that's just so great to see from a husband standpoint and, mm-hmm. um, you know, you supporting right. our child. It's right. just great. So I want to give you your props on that. Thank you. Um, I really and, appreciate and that. Yes, babe. you can be hard on yourself sometimes, but it's really unnecessary. I know. Um, and I know that it's unnecessary, but sometimes again, when you're in your own head, yeah. you're not, yeah, and you're just you're saying clouded that, by exactly, that, and clouded that's just, by that. Yeah. you're just saying that's one of your flaws yeah. that you possibly have, and I can understand that that could be. And one I can of your see flaws. that appearing, you know, in early parenthood, and just one trying to address, continue to address it now, so when it does rear its head, I know how to handle it. Exactly. Um, especially you know going through postpartum as mm-hmm. well. I really don't 
I, I hope and pray, you know, but it, it does affect a lot of moms out there, postpartum depression. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really just hope that if something, if it does arise that I can address it early on so that, um, I'm taking care of me and that way I can take care of us and Jordan and our family as best as possible. So I think that that will be um, a trait that I really don't want to pop out, but I know that I do have that, that trait. And you know, you have me that's always going to encourage yes. you and, and mm-hmm. make, sh- make sure that you know that you're doing a great job. Cause yeah. I know you will. I mean, it's right. just like, I have no doubts in the world. Thank you, babe. That yeah. means a lot to me. So do you have any other, yeah. any other flaws? Um, not flaws. I didn't mean flaws. We do. We all got flaws. <laughs> do you have any other? So, yes, I, <laughs> yes, I, I do. Meant. But um, <laughs> just another thing that I can think coming up, and I, it goes back to just the selfishness. And though we have grown tremendously, I think in early stages of parenthood, I think my own selfish tendencies will appear, and me just feeling like. I'm missing out on a lot of stuff, Mm. seeing like friends travel during the summer. And, Mm. you know, I'm used to us taking trips and doing certain things and not being able to just pack up and go. Right. I think is going to affect me a little bit. Yeah. Um, As much as I am so excited for Jordan and, you know, we're going to love him unconditionally. I would be lying if I didn't see my friends going to all these places and I just be like, man. I've been in the house for three weeks. Like, you yeah. know, I'm sleep deprived. Like I would love to be, you know, on a vacation somewhere. And I think that that selfishness will appear in early on in parenthood because yeah. a lot will change and you can't just get up and go the way that you used to. You know, that is so interesting that you mentioned that because now that you said that, mm-hmm. that's definitely something that I would struggle with too. Um, more, more so yeah, like the like FOMO, basically. Yeah. Uh, Even if it's just going out to eat or something, it's like right. Um, if we both want to do it, like who's going to wash the baby see, or I, like have some us time or something? Exactly, and I think that is um, something that we should definitely write down. Yeah. As far as like trying to alleviate some of that pressure or, or feel like you know we're missing out on stuff because mm-hmm. this is the next chapter of life that Very we have to really just fully embrace mm-hmm. and it is going to be a transition and tough for us just because we have been in a relationship for 13 years yeah. and we've always been, uh, it's just been me and you yeah. just like travel the world, yeah. enjoying adventures and doing crazy things, jumping out of planes. <laughs> I mean, can't do that right now. You know, <laughs> Taking spontaneous trips to yeah. places like, you know, that is changing Yes, on a dime mm-hmm. now. And it just, our life is changing and we mm-hmm. have to realize that and we are realizing that, but it is something that could affect those mm-hmm. first, that first year, first two years of, of, um, parenthood. Yeah. And something that we really have to like shift our mind to say, mm-hmm. this is what life is now. It's about growing our baby boy and growing our family mm-hmm. and just really embracing this new lifestyle yeah. of me being a father and you being a mom and right. us working together and him seeing, seeing true that. authentic yeah. love and that's ultimately what we want we yeah. want him to see just a good reflection of what love is right. and what it should look like through our relationship and he admires that and i know he, when he gets older he's probably gonna be like ew look at them y'all lovey-dovey <laughs> but He's going to look back that look back on those moments as a young man and be like, wow, yeah. I was exposed to um, a positive, healthy, loving relationship. Yeah. And through that, I know how to treat myself. I know my own self-worth and I know how to give that to other people. Yeah. And I really want him to know how to treat a woman. Yes. And I want him to see that through me because mm-hmm. I never had that growing up. Right. I never had a father growing up. And for me to be a good father in all areas of life, but also especially how to treat a woman, how to treat mm-hmm. the 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 woman of your dreams or yeah. to, to treat whoever you're in a relationship with, with respect, yes. honor mm-hmm. and true love is mm-hmm. so important to me. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. And I think, you know, us talking about some of the early struggles mm-hmm. that we possibly could face is so 
impactful for yeah. us right now because we can work on it right now. Right. And we can work on it in that first year, that second mm-hmm. year, that third year so that everything continues to smooth transition into just a beautiful blossom of growth. Yeah. For of love, mm-hmm. of our family, of Jordan, of our relationship, mm-hmm. our marriage. Yeah. I agree. I I think everything you said is spot on and just continuing to know that the reality is that challenges are going to happen. Like Amen. you said, it struggles is. are inevitable. And I just hope and pray that we still enjoy each other through the process. I, we obviously love each other. That's not going anywhere. But I just want us to still like each other in the process and enjoy each other in the process. And there may be moments where we don't. But I hope that those don't trump everything else. And we understand that, like you said, this is the next chapter. And we're growing our family. And we're doing it as best as we can. And we, you know, we got we are putting our faith forward. God is going to make sure we're good. He's been making sure that we are good this Mm -hmm. entire time. So all we can do is continue that. That continues. Um, And I think that we'll be good. And and although our family, our families aren't close, our family and friends are very supportive. And so we're very lucky to have that as well. So with all of those things combined, I think that we'll be good. It's going to be scary. I think we'll be good. We'll and be good. We've got a lot of support and a lot of people. I'm scared. I ain't going to lie. I'm a little scared. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm more excited than scared. She has no reason to be scared. No uh, reason to be scared. When we bring the baby home, it's just like, so what now? <laughs> just kidding. No, but no, seriously, though. Like, yeah, no, it is gonna, it's going to be. And just making sure, like, okay, he breathes. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, what are you doing now? <laughs> exactly. Uh, but uh, yeah, we wanted to have this conversation about struggles mm-hmm. because just as much as we prepare for some of the things that we can be successful at, mm-hmm. we also talk, have to talk about some of the challenges that we could face because of who we are individually mm-hmm. and who we are as a couple and really thinking about maybe some of these are some areas that we could be better at and Mm -hmm. we can progress at to a place where now we don't have that type of struggle going forward and then also even if we do struggle with it it's something good to talk about so that our partner hears it and knows it and and we can both acknowledge it here in the present and work and be vulnerable together with it yeah and i think this conversation not only helps us but it helps you guys out there because all parents have to go through this process of understanding understanding strengths and weaknesses yes and this is what we're doing right now and we got two months to go in our pregnancy but that time is going to fly so let's let's really prepare right now yeah with some of the strengths and weaknesses that we can work on and go from there amen to that well said babe well said thank you thank you and with that we are going to sign off for today thank you so much for listening to this podcast specifically the pregnancy series we really do hope that you guys are enjoying it as we are in the third trimester and we're nearing the end so this series essentially is going to end soon it is so we hope that you guys have been enjoying it thus far don't forget to like share comment and subscribe to our channel for more content centered around the pregnancy series but not only that just healthy relationships and watching our family grow as well so with that we are signing off for today my name is jen and i'm shane and we are the ambors enjoy the journey peace so conversations like this i think are super important because as new parents we have to really evaluate ourselves and us as a couple